So welcome to everybody who joins the beautiful lesson of uh, Dr. Oliver Wu. And today the title is How to Dance uh, with the Mallorca Master. I already got the first comment right now, which was I got my dancing lessons from one attendee. So this is brilliant. Let me, before start, to start, let me say some, some words about Dr. Oliver Wu. So Dr. Oliver Wu uh, practices in New South Wales, Australia. He also did his optometrist in, uh, um, in, in the University of New South Wales, Sydney. He's an independent optometrist since 1997, so he practices already a, a, a pretty long time. And he opened an also K and Myopia Management Clinic in 2010. My Oculus uh, developed the Myopia Master in 2000, let's say, 16 we started, so he is more experienced than we are. He's in this field since a pretty long time. And today, yes, he talks about how to dance with the Myopia Master. I think everybody has seen the beautiful advertisement where he is already dancing with the device in his hands. <laughs> and I think the session will be very, very cool and funny. Um, but before we start, I would like to mention a few things. So on the right side, you have questions, answer, and a chat function. So whenever you have questions, just type it in the Q&A section. I will answer to you all the questions at the end. If there is a question which uh, um, um, is related to exactly what Dr. Wu talks about right now, I will interrupt. But in principle, we go in the Q&A section at the end of the session. So be patient. And, and you will get your answer. Dr. Oliver Wu, are you ready to start the dancing lessons? Brilliant. Thank you, everyone. Um, yeah, good afternoon, good evening, and late at night from across Europe, Asia, and Australia. Um, it's so excited uh, to share with all of you about how to dance with the Maupi Master, how we can have fun together. And okay, let me start my presentation with you. And oops, let's have a look. Great. Okay. How to dance with my peer master. Okay, let's have a look. Some disclosure about these uh, uh, presentations and the preparations. And also this is my love and passions in my peer management. So this guy. Can you guess who is it? No, it's, it's Dr. Paul Rose. No, not Dr. Paul Rose. And who is this lady next to this guy? Professor Pamaja. She is the one who helped me to learn more about my OP management, also the my OP master as well. And who is this guy? You can see me on the purple shirt with a very retro dancing look mode. And also my two good friends, Jason and Jess. And they're my good friend. They will in the future, they will share the share the stay with me and other people talk about my and also some specialty scale lens in the future. Okay, what is NMM? Okay, what is my OPM master or what is uh, my OPM management? When we say about m and what do you think about m and m Chocolate? Yeah, chocolate. Something really sweet, okay? Something we eat when we're young, but don't eat too much, otherwise we become too fat. Too fat will also induce, uh, make it more high chance for my <laughs> Like you, David, Merry Man, isn't it? <laughs> stand for Merry Man or Maupi Management. Is MMM mean for Maupi Management to us? MMM also stand for Millimeter. We think we also think about yes, what's the size like? Okay, the the size, how much it change? And when we talk about MMM, what is MMM? It's actually, we're going to share with you, uh, we learn together how we grow our business together. It's something we, we want to think about, what is myopia? So let's think about why you say no to myopia management. Okay. Yes, I'm retiring 30 years later. That's why you say no to myopia master and also myopia management. Yes, I'm doing high propia my management, explaining, repeating the same thing twice again and again. Okay, I don't like to do with parents and the kids because I don't like it because I'm I'm not that type of people. And also, this is probably not my focus. My, my workplace not the focus. Probably more retail glasses only. Don't want to do any myopia related things. 
maybe you think about yes i don't have the knowledge a lack of it and also the essential devices in uh, offering market management yes a lot of people say yeah you need to teach me about how to manage my op that's true that's why we're here today to learn together uh, to share the knowledge together encourage each other and some of the people will say to me say yes i don't have the product in my country um, that I don't have some specialty spectacle lenses or contact lenses in my country. Yeah, that's something that we might say no to my peer management. Yeah, this some people say, yeah, not my cup of tea because I'm drinking a cup of coffee. That's why I don't want to do my peer management. Yeah, too expensive to my patient. I think we, we, we heard about this thing, a lot of excuses we do. And people say, yeah, it's normal. It's no way to stop. And I'm watching symptoms. That's why no, I don't want to do my peer management. And a lot of us will think about this, the really, really interesting thing is, I only know how to prescribe the treatment, but I don't know how to manage myopia. This is something that we all having trouble or difficulties in managing myopia. That is something that we want to learn together, to grow together. That's why we have some new machines, myopia must help us to uh, do myopia management in a different way and redefine how we do things together. So this is, my, it, uh, this is about my dancing skill back in 1997. So you can see my, my, my history is about, I do bifocal, multifocal, visual training, then we start 1998 and all the way through, you can see I've been using my biometry machines back in 2005. So which a lot of e many years ago. So that's how my, my dancing skill keep changing and improving. I am so lucky that I exposed to many different products even before the market's launch. Um, I'm so lucky, like 12 months ago, I have the I'm so blessed I have the Maupi Master in my practice, which helped me to see Maupi management in a different way. Uh, it gave me a lot of good scientific background, helped me to manage Maupi more effectively. And also we can it helped me and help the parents, my patients uh, to visualize what the right decision to make. I mean, I'm so lucky to have a good product I can use way before a lot of markets uh, launch. So that's my journey in MyOP management. I'm still learning how to do MyOP management uh, in my professional life. Even a lot of people say, yeah, you've been, you have done you know, MyOP management for so many years. You should know how to do it. I said, no, I'm still learning how to do MyOP. Uh, the hardest part is not what to use. I mean, what type of treatment uh, or options we use. I think the other is how do we decide and how do we manage myopia? I think this is something really hard. Uh, I think a lot of us think, how do we decide which one? How do we manage? How do we help the parent, the patient understand the real meaning and the consequences of being a, a myopia, myopia? That is something really difficult for us as an optometrist or eye care practitioners to help them to understand. The numbers in myopia, I mean, the numbers is the patient probably see myopia is just adopters, minus two, minus three, minus five, minus seven. But now we see myopia differently. We see myopia is the millimeter now. So we want to see how eyesight change. So we want to slow down that excellent change because we want to reduce the risk the people, uh, the myopic person, we will encounter in the future to their retinal health. And I'm still learning how to explain to, to all my myopia patients and the parents because no single patient are the same. So there are a lot of things I need to learn. And a lot of people say myopia management is easy, but I think it's just a joke. If you say myopia management is easy, it's not that easy. Um, it's not easy because a lot of things we need to learn. Myopia management is more than just a pair of contact lenses or a pair of glasses or drops. So a lot of things is more than we think that we can do. Like me and myself have been doing my management for so many years, I'm still learning. I still want to learn, I still want to see how I can present and tell the whole picture, like the whole picture of my to the parents and to the patient. And it's not that easy to present and tell the whole picture because you see differently. and. The hardest part for me and for a lot of us who've been doing our peer management, management maybe five years, 10 years, and we may find it's hard and how we can advise them, guide them, and recommend them to decide 
which treatment plans or options to do. I think there are a lot of things we need to learn. We need to encourage each other uh, to grow together, to manage myopia in a more scientific and professional way. So myopia management is something is we as an eye care practitioner optometrist, we have to understand the patient and the parent's language. We have to see what they really understand about myopia management, what they want. They understand our language as well. So we want to help them to understand what we want to present. I know a lot of people sometimes get so frustrated about uh, some parents, they don't want to take up or take up some uh, myopia management or intervene the uh, myopia progression for the kids or our patient. Um, there's something is something we might missing in between is how we can help them to align. I mean, the patients, the parents, ourselves as eye care practitioner, how we can align them. We have the same thing we know what we're talking about is a communication between us about how we can align them together to see the one direction in educating them how to manage myopia together. So we are in the role, not just managing, we're also in the role to educate our parents, the myopia uh, kids parents and the myopia kids about what is myopia, how we can educate them uh, from position to understand what the meanings of dioptics and also the meaning of millimeters. So education is very important in our myopia management um, like journey. So when we explain myopia management, um, are you using any chart or maybe you're using some uh, research paper? So what about myself? How do I use it? This is the way I normally use. This is the way I normally use. I tell people this is minus two. Minus four. Australia here. Minus six. Whoa! That's is a minus ten. Bang. So the patients can really visualize the eyes getting longer. That's the potential problem. It's seeing really believing. Something we want to present to the patients and also the parents about what really mild peer problem is. Um, because when they visualize what we want to tell them, they can understand what we're doing. So back in last year, in May last year, 2020, I mean, a little lack of faith because not many people were willing to invest during the COVID time. And I invested, I purchased the Maupi Master. So I have one year experience with the machines, how the he, I mean, this, this, this machine, how the machines uh, helped me to change and transform the way I'm doing my OP management in my practice. It's a probably the daily best, best partner in my OP management in my practice on the top of my topographer. <laughs> and I, I said, this really completely transformed the way I'm doing my OP management. It helped me to visualize and help my patients to see the whole things was happening. What is they can see from the chart, how the management program that we executing. So from visualizations about how the chart, how the eye, how the excellent, how the doctor would change, and what sort of execution, what the decisions we made, and the chart, the Malpia master help it to to confirm the decision we made in managing it or not managing it, and. By doing the right execution, the patients can see the good result. At the same time, by executions, uh, I said it helped me to execute a lot of management or plan or decision making options much more quick and easier. So by executing much quicker and better, and we know we can have more financial uh, benefit, uh, financial reward as well. So technology is about the machines. It's like a BMW X1. Yeah, this is pretty much in Australia. This machine calls a, a BMW, BMW X1. Okay, that's like I said, my OP master, blue color is nice. It's powered by BMW. No, no, no. This is, I was saying, it's, it's not be powered by BMW. This machine is powered by BHBI. And how I present it in my practice is I put in the really nice locations 
the people can see the eye catching location. When patients come in, they can see the machine stand alone in my in my room, and most of them will say, "Wow, what is this machine? It looks different." Because the design looks different, and they look at the name is Malpi Master, then they will ask about what is that machine. Because I tell them this machine is more than just a number. A machine not not just telling what's the number. It's the machine also is a risk teller. It's telling us if we don't manage the Malpi properly, and what's the risk that your kid is going to face in the future. So this is in, in the, like one of the kids. Uh, we had beginning the excellent 24 18 and he was about seven years of age that's his prescriptions and they using the projection all the data from china uh, the shanghai hospital and that's the projecting what the prescription will be so karen will say wow minus 10 by the age of 18 my god they visualize it they know what the story is about because the picture tell them if we do something for them, for the kids, we can do something better. We can help them to see what the future is like. If we don't do anything, that's what future will be. If we can execute it, we can help the kids. A lot of the time, parents will denial. I think a lot of us will face the same thing is, we tell the parents about your kids, uh, my well, a lot of the parents will say, yeah, no, no, my kids are fine. He can see six, six, he can 20. He no complain about it in school, no complain in home. But by having the machines, the whole information, the pictures, and the parents will understand what we want to present to them. So a lot of time we can see parents that denial because they're not seeing a clear picture of, of the kids in the future. So they understand what we want to tell them. And it also helped them to make the decisions much more if more quicker and also help us to execute and pre uh, prescribe the best option for the Maopi kids. So when we have this decision making time, so we have to think about who is in control in making the decision decisions. So with the Maopi master, it helped me to, to easily tell the patients and the parents about how the decision is making, what would be the best options. So it requires us to have commitment. Commitment, not just me, not just the kid. It's like a, like, like a family uh, things together. It's a parents, the kid, and us. So something we need to commit together to make sure we can make this happen to the kids. So when these all things are done, we can make the good transactions on, on what prescriptions, uh, what treatment plan we're going to uh, prescribe to the patient. It makes my transactions uh, much more quick and easier. That's something we always see a lot of pre mile in our practice. So it is really important to identify the pre mile in, in our practice. So we look at some of the plus reserve. And if in your country, in your place where you work, you can do cyclo, that's with the best. And also we try to get the maximum plus if you don't, if you're unable to do cyclo. So we want, we want to get the baseline of the, the pre mile. What's this like? And also we have looked at age, look at the axiling, how they're matching it. And important thing, once we is a K reading. K reading re really important when we look at, uh, when we look at some uh, uh, um, myope. Okay, if they're more fat, okay, something we know that something is happening maybe in the future. And annual checkup is really important, especially those pre mile because we have a baseline. We can see them every six months or every 12 months. We know how the actual link change. Something that we can help us to understand how, how the kids is going to go to happen. And this is the baseline reference. This is something really important for us. So machine, this machine helped me do a lot of things that patient can see. Because a lot of patients in my practice, the parents say, I said to them, you can come back every 12 months. Some of the parents say, no, 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 no. Um, I want them to come back every six months. So I, OK, it's fine. I said, no problem. Because those parents who so worry about the kids, most of them, both parents are myopic. So when you do myopic management, there's two things I love to share with you. We have little missions, a mission to prevent retinal, ocular health complications due to axial elongations and also high myopia. And the visions, the vision for 
is to change the 2050 model peer forecast from 50% to 40. We try to treat and all, um, treat the kids and find out the pre mile much earlier so we can slow down a lot of things. There's a little bit case study I'd love to share with you. Uh, the number one case is, uh, is a boy, 11 years of age. Um, this boy, 11 years of age. Uh, and he came to my practice uh, in June 2020 uh, because the mom said, yeah, uh, the kids having progressions really quick over the last 12 months. And they decide, uh, they used to use a uh, single vision glasses and they decided to use the defocus lenses to manage myopia uh, because the parent doesn't want to do any contact lens for the kids. That's why um, we choose the defocus lenses. So we have a regular checkup. He come back in April 2021 and for the aftercare, we find there's excellent change and prescription changes. And it make a decision time. The parents think about, yeah, should I use atropine? Should I use the focus soft content lens now or off okay or combine treatment? So the parents are so uncertain about off okay's efficacy. So they decide to give it a go, give it a try and see how they go. So this is the number we can see the uh, prescription changes about 075, okay, over about eight months and uh, nine months. And also excellent change about uh, roughly about 0.4 millimeters for both eyes. As we can see, the parent can understand uh, all this number now because when we show them what's it like, uh, what's it mean, they understood it. So that that system information and the K reading is 41, around 41, both eyes. So that's the excellent changes before we using orthokeratology lenses for managing myopia. So we can the after of okay after one month and the excellent excellent actually shorten. So the parents are wow, they see the difference. They see wow, once we use off okay and everything slowed down, they stop. So he come is he come to do the ortho okay in April and we do this as one month is in May. So this is how the axial link changes from uh, the far right. I mean, your left is when they come in June and then April, and then they come in and uh, uh, June to the for after care. So he come back not long ago. We can see the axial link is shortening, and also the prescription of also kids plus all fifty. So he's really happy. And something we have to think about is for this case study. Um, what is the management plan we need to do? Uh, after, after, after care frequency, we need to, uh, to offer or to perform. So should we see him one month or we, should we see him at three months, four months, six months, or 12 months? So how frequent you want to uh, do the aftercare for this, this young um, myopic kid? So something we need to think about how often. With the machine, why not you do it more frequent? One month, three months, four months, six months. Definitely, I won't recommend six or twelve months because six or twelve months sometimes can change a lot because it's a young boy. And uh, should we atropine? That's something that we want is we we want to challenge ourselves. Is mm, if we put atropine together with all four K, we may maximize the uh, atro uh, max maximize the myopic control effect. So but there's something we need to think about how we need to manage this this kit. Something for us to think about is why there's excellent change uh, from July last year until um, April. Why the excellent changes? Is it because uh, the lens not working? The defocus lens not working? Or is it still working if we continue to wear the lenses? So why do we make these changes from defocus lenses into ortho K? There are a lot of things that we have to think about when we manage a myopia. Uh, it's not just switching quickly from one, one option to another option. The last thing we need to think about when we see a case like this, this young boy is 11 years of age, and we have to understand his, his lifestyle. And in Australia, he came in July, which is winter, and he come back for the last, uh, he, he come for the three visit. The visit we came back is on April. so. In Australia, most of the people understand 11 years of age boy, they from E5 to E6, which is from the primary school, they have one exam called selective school exam. 
So this young boy spent a lot of time in the summertime, which is our Christmas in Australia is super hot, okay? In the summertime, standing at home, not going much outdoor. So basically lifestyle changed a lot because he preparing for the exam because of the education issue. He is a really smart boy and he is high achiever. And he just told me because I saw him uh, two weeks ago, he just got some scholarship to one of the top uh, selective school, uh, private school. So sometimes when we look at a case, we have to know a bit more about the background. So sometimes we have to think about, yes, why these kids uh, progress. A lot of factors will affect how we make decisions, what to do. And at the same time, we have to reassure to the parent is what we're doing is correct and why we need to make these changes. Communications in my management is really important. So think about how we communicate, how we understand the whole scenario is really important. Routine examinations definitely is highly recommend for everyone who uh, do my management. And Depends on your staff, depends on your patients. I mean, you might see the three monthly, four monthly. I think that probably three months for families is probably the max. Six months to me is too long. There are too many changes can happen. And also you do in it, especially important when we do offer keratology. Uh, Axillary meshing is very important because a lot of us understood when we performing ortho keratology, it's really hard to get the prescription right. And because when the corner changes, a lot of things that we can measure. Um, that's why we understand, um, make sure we have excellent measurement uh, done before we start off. Okay. If you have just started, try to do it as early as possible. If you don't have the uh, biometry uh, machines, you can access, you cannot access any biometry uh, machine. Ask your colleague or maybe some ophthalmologist and work together. So, case number two. Okay. Uh, a boy seven years of age let's have a look that's prescription seven years of age right right side minus four two five oh seven five oh fifty seal left three seven five oh seven five and excellence of a twenty five seven eight and twenty five six five whoa very close to twenty six is a danger shown isn't it you can see whoa it's going to whoa, like rocket <laughs> go really really high i mean this is really sad. We will see this case is a sad case. So the chart help the parents help us to present is much easier. They visualize what is happening. So hey, David, how are you? You in there? David? What's in your, yeah, what's, hi. What do you, what do you, what's in your mind when you see the rocket go up? Oh, wow. Maybe that's exactly the, the correct uh, uh, way of demonstration. So seven years old and almost 26 millimeters this is incredible high and um, there should be a reaction so it, this this doesn't stop or it will it will it will continue growing of course and you have to do whatever you can do to stop this growth so what would you do what i would do oh that's <laughs> that's a that's a good question first of all i would get through some questionnaire so I would try to understand, okay, what's the genetic factor? What's the um, environmental factors like uh, outdoor activity, reading time, reading distance? And then for me, in a young child, I think it's super important to give lifestyle recommendations. So please, if you read very close, please take care that you don't read so close, that you don't read so long. That's super, super important. And of course, you cannot go without uh, the treatment of all the K lenses or um, atropine. So I would do all the K lenses in this case because we have already minus four diopters. Um, yeah. So that's what I would do um, to start with. But just in this case, I, or I, I don't see the case in particular, I just see these few numbers, but that already tells me you have to react. Yeah, I mean, like David said, is we have to do a lot of questions and ask about a lot of things to parents and present our concern with them. And also we have to think about how we present our management plan. That's, I think a lot of us will find it really difficult to present the management plan, especially for the, that young boy, seven years of age, high myo for his age, and also the high axial length. So hardest part, I think for us, for a young boy is who will choose the final treatment plan? 
a lot of the time, it's so young, the parents so panic, and they're so worried about what's going to happen to the kids. Most of the time, they will say, "Hey, uh, doctor, doctor, uh, can you help me? Give me the best plan. I know you would give the best plan to 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 my kids." At the same time, we have to think about: Do we have Plan B, if the Plan A we recommend didn't work, so a lot of time when we do this, we have to prepare ourselves and think about Plan A and Plan B. When we present Plan A and Plan B to the patients, and they feel really, really confident about yes, this is the guy, this is the lady that I, I'm so.、Uh, I have confidence in him and in her because they already have something planned ahead for my kids. If something's not working, there's other things happening. So something that sometimes、uh, we have to prepare ourselves and plan a lot of things for 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 our myopic patients. So what treatment plan are we using? Okay, I mean we think about if we we have a patient like this in your in your practice, you're going to use a defocus of family lenses or myopic control soft contact lenses. Or through K, or you have the atropine together. So a lot of things you have to think about: which plan I will have to go, what things I need to offer. So at the same time, we have to talk about、uh, when you, we're using each option. We have to explain to them at, and discuss with them about the procedure and also the frequency of the aftercare. Uh, it show them that we care about the kids. We want them to see them regularly. We want to take care of them. We want to know what the eyes is happening. Important part: we want to stress to them. We want to see the size of your eyeball. I mean, the, your kid's eyeball size changes. This is something really important: the size change. Because parents now will we will help the parents to shift from the diopters to the axial length, the millimeter. Something we have to help them to understand. We are cared about the ocular health and and also the prescription. That's something we try to help us 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 together with the parents. Is we align together to know what we're doing and how we're doing things in the same directions. So this is how the eyes look like after ortho K. So after about five five six months, that's really really nice. Axial length shortened because we know ortho keratologies. It's something we know how we can change the eye size as well. I mean, a lot of myopic control product will help us to slow down the axillary changes and also the shortening the eye size. This is before the、uh, before any treatment. You can see like a rocket go up. So this is how we see the chart after the ortho K. We can see、uh, in that four months we have already about four four times to measure the eye size. So this is how we change some people's. And we how we change the people's eye light and also the how eye size change. You can see the chart pr pr plotted. We flatten the eyeball and、uh, we change the eye size and the prescription and also axoline will change because we are flattening the curve. So we delay all the progression. We can change the life of a lot of people and also reduce the risk for them、uh, the retinal problem. So we can see this is how we started and how is after about. Five months of uh, uh, ortho care、uh, for the RP management. So a chart can tell the parents, and they can visualize. We can make the right decision. We execute the right things for the kids' future. So he's coming back for the、uh, in the school holiday in two weeks' time in Australia. So let's see what his eye size will will be like. It might be maintained the same. It might be shorter. It might be longer. We have no idea. <laughs> So as long as we will manage everything in a good way, that is the good things. So these kids, we have to think about how our management plan. We have to think about how frequent we we see him, and reflections. Why the axial length changes? Ah,、uh, no change. Something we think about is it because of the corridor thickening, or because some of the changes in the front of the cornea? Because we have to prepare ourselves to answer this question to the parents. Is ortho case the best option in managing myopia? Uh, sometimes may not be the best because sometimes we find the kids cannot wear ortho K lenses because I think a lot of us encounter the same problem.、Uh, we have a we I have a lot of kids、uh, myopic patients on soft contact lens and defocus lenses. They also work really well in managing the myopia and also axial length. And when do we need to make changes? For example, do we need to put atropine on the kids? 
I think for me, for this case, probably I will monitor it until there's some big changes. Uh, then we will consider to put atropine together. So a lot of things we have to think about, reflect when you see a case, when we finish a case that a, a patient, we'll sit down and think about that's how our knowledge will start growing together. Patients are really happy, parents are really happy because we have delayed the progressions, we have slowed down the retinal risk. So what if we don't do anything? So what if we don't do anything? Or what if the parent don't execute the right decision? What if they can't see the picture properly? They don't understand what we're doing. So we have to tell the parents about, we are managing and controlling exomyopia. So something we have to present to the parent, although we understand we are managing and controlling exomyopia. So I always say to a lot of people, early intervention is the best things to manage myopia. So there are a lot of treatment plans that we uh, encounter, we can offer to the patient, depend where you are, depend which country you are. So we can have eye draw, we can have glasses, we can offer, okay, you can soft lenses. There are a lot of plans that we can do together to manage myopia. So how many options are you using right now in your practice? So how many of you, I mean, how many options you are using now? So how confident are you in managing myopia? So you did something is we, we, we want all of us to think about is what options we have in hand, which options we have confidence in managing, maybe not confidence in using ortho K, how you can improve your skill, what you plan to make yourself better, or you just refer to your malpeer management colleague who can handle it for you. If you think about these is, Am I not being responsible or something that I would love my friends to handle it? At the same time, if we look at the reform financial is we somehow we're passing a lot of uh, uh, practice building uh, potentials in what we call like some patients to other people. And we consider how we can invest equipment like my OP master uh, to build a practice. You have to think about how we invest something like this machine into your practice and to build your practice. And when we do myopia management and when we offering all the treatment plan, one thing's really important is called commitment. We have to commit what we're doing. Um, being, having done off okay uh, for about um, 23 years now. So it's you've quite a lot of commitment because it's really, really, uh, tired is a labor of love something we have to commit to do what we're doing and if you really want to think about if you really want to do something let get started when you get started you will see your return of investment you can see a lot of good return investment from what you have committed and what you, what you have invested the secret of getting ahead is to get started so we think about how you can get started Try to be more different, try to ahead of other people and to build your practice using myopia management. When we talk about myopia management, you have to be really excited what you're doing. You have to be really passionate about you offering that treatment to your patient. And excellent is a good indicator to help you to manage that properly and also present the treatment plan to your patients. And when we see the treatment plan, we have to revise, modify all the treatment plan when needed. So I say to many people, in my patients, no single product is better than the other. Okay, you can say A product is better than B, B better than C. Sometimes we have to think about, we need to personalize care treatment plan to each individual. It's a personal personalized care treatment plans. So we have to think about it, how we can dance. When do my management, it's not just us. It's a collaboration work. We have to think about how we can leverage between two professions, especially optometry and ophthalmology, how we can work together. We have to think about our patients is our priority. Their ocular health is a priority. They are the, their interest is a priority. And one thing I've been so excited about is about six weeks ago, there's one ophthalmologist. Um, we, 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 I refer that young, young boy for the ophthalmo a pediatric ophthalmologist and um, to do some checkup for the kid's eye problem. And the ophthalmologist personally called me back. 
because I wrote the referral letter with all the information data and to the to the ophthalmologist. And the ophthalmologist asked me, "Is what do you use for biometry? Are you using A scan?" I said, "No, <laughs> I'm not using A scan." And the ophthalmologist asked me, "What are you using?" And I said, "I'm using the Oculus uh, Multi Master. It's optical biometry." And the ophthalmologist said, "Yes, we are on the same page in managing myopia together." So something we have a common language between two profession. It's a generative learning rather than a passive learning. Because when you collaborate together, we learn together, it's a more generated, more effective way to grow together. Something we have to see how we can grow and also we can see the empowerment for ourselves together. So it's a community of mild peer management. It's a community of mild peer management and mild peer master. So when we all do together, we all as a family together. We can do all things together. It's a really, really sweet, uh, sweet time together. And this is a crystal ball. Everyone wants to see the crystal ball. Everyone wants to see what happened in the future. And this is the power of Maupin management. That's the power of Maupin master. It's a machine with the power of education. It educates a lot of people. It's a machine. It's the power of early screening. It's a machine, a power of early interventions. This is a machine, a power of ending Maupi progression. You are empowered by Maupi Master to manage Maupi. So we have the machine, we can help you to manage much more easier and properly and early. That's how I've been doing the last 12 months. It made me much better. And I believe you are empowered to change people's life because we can have much better things uh, much better early chance to help the people or uh, mild kids to manage myopia. The technology actually definitely is paying me a lot of financial reward because it's more continuous. Because a lot of parents will tell other parents about he doing something really different. He do something really different to other practice, and he helped me to investigate more patient needs. Technology really helped me to perform the absolute best of my job to the patient. This is something I expected myself to perform the absolute best. And also it's so touch and blessed by the success of management in myopia. Because you see a lot of success about how you do myopia management. You're so happy and excited every day. I have one colleague um, just called me about two weeks ago and said, hey, Oli, when do you have time? Can I buy you lunch or dinner? Because I really want to learn a bit more about myopia management. And he said to me, it's the last 12 months, I'm so happy. I find my profession much more satisfied than saying glasses because I can see the myopia management. I see how I change people's life. And I said to him, good, no problem. Let's meet the time and let's dance. <laughs> Just got dancing like this. I think a lot of people see this guy dance so amazing, isn't it? So uh, how I'm going to dance with you. A lot of people dancing this, isn't it? <laughs> the dancing mat. That's how the dancing step, how to right, left, forward, backward. And this is how I see my dancing step every day in my practice. This is my daily dancing step, how the excellent change, how we're going to manage it together. And let's stand with the Maupi master. We want to speak the language the parents and the patient understood. They knew what we're talking. Show them the actual myopia picture. Guide them to understand future danger. Present the myopia management to them. Routine re review and aftercare. Routine review aftercare is really important when you're managing myopia. And also our myopia manage plan, uh, management plan, we need to revise regularly. So utilize the technologies, a lot of product technology outside that is available. So we have to be more proactive and innovative how we do things. So that's how we see the curves and how we can help the K patients, myopic patients to slow down the myopia curve. That is something I love to take us and share with you, just take some take home messages. Axel myopia is really crucial in our management. We have to offer the optimal management plan to each myopic case and patient. Every single millimeter means, no, no, actually it's not every single millimeter, it's every single 0 0.1 millimeter means. 
with one to do control down to 0.1. Think about we need to change our, our thing is every single 0.1 millimeter means now. Early intervention, communications, mild peer management required us to have a lot of good communications and also good dancing like the BTS people like that. So nice and great. <laughs> Routine review them. Mild peer management is a journey of TLC. It's not one off, it's a journey of TLC. The kids, and they become teenage, and they will become adult, they will feel this gentleman, this lady really take care of me. And they will really appreciate what we do. So for them, from now and for the future. Last message to all of us, to all of us is visualizations, execution, celebrations. With this nice equipment technology, Malpi Master, it helped me and helped the patient to visualize what is happening right now, what's going to happen in the future if we don't execute the right decisions and the right treatment plan. When we can execute the right treatment plan, we can see, you can visualize the outcome and the best result. When we see the best result, we can see the controlling the Malpi. We can all celebrate. We can all celebrate and happy and do everything. Oops. Why is it going to... So we can celebrate with a song like this. Whoa! It's a time to celebrate. It's a time to conquer Maopia. It's a time to dance with the Maopia master. It's a time that we can have fun together. Let's stay with the mouth here, Master. I wish you enjoyed the talk. And just the people I love to uh, acknowledge. And if you, if you have any questions, feel free to email me to this interesting, lovely, fun email address. Game over, Maupia. <laughs> this was really a fantastic and really refreshing um, presentation. So thank you very much, Oliver. Um, I, I, I understood that I had some sound issues. Can you hear me good, Oliver? What? Can, can, can you understand what I'm saying? Can you hear good what I'm saying? I hear. <laughs> okay. Wait, then let me try to change my microphone. Okay. Good. I can see better. Yeah. Beautiful. So I just come back on my computer. So can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Brilliant. So it was a super, super cool, refreshing um, presentation. Thank you very much. It's fantastic. I always believed I'm a good dancer, but uh, <laughs> actually, this is not true. You are the master. In dancing especially with the myopia master we have plenty of questions i hope we can do that in the next 10 minutes so let's just start with it um quite at the beginning of the session there was a question do you think it will make it easier for practitioners um to start with the myopia master when getting into the field of myopia management and if yes what would be the features of the uh, of the machine that will enable these practitioners transition to myopia management easier? I think with the myopia master, it, um, it helped us to present to the parents about how uh, what's happening right now and the future. If the parents deny how to offer or to make the right decision to slow down the myopia, um, then the, what's going to happen? So parents can see what the changes. If some parents deny or don't want to take the treatment, I have some parents they still denial in the accepting the kids at myopia. So I recommend them, I intentions, I mean, I insist to bring the kids back every three months. I call them up and every three months, I bring them back and have the eye check and check the prescriptions and check the actual link. So the parent will see uh, the, the problem, the trend, what's going to happen. I think that it was something really uh, make us really easier, make easier to, to communicate with the parents about, uh, 
if we manage myopia properly, uh, myopia master is a really good tool, uh, a device to help us to to do things much more quicker. So like I said, visualize and execute and celebrate something, three things this machine can really, I can see this one help me much more easier uh, in the last 12 months to making the right decisions. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much for this uh, uh, answer. There are several questions. They are all asking about the same stuff. And this is super interesting because I'm also really curious what, what's your opinion about that. So can the actual length shorten in young kids with a treatment? Uh, next question, is it true that shortening of actual length uh, is, is, is there or is it an optical effect? Others estimate that this is a flattening of the cornea, which makes a shorter actual length. So maybe you have some ideas why you get a shorter eye when treating, treating we, the we eye. Have, we, I, had, I, I had used about different, I had before before the Maupi Master, I had two other different company biometry machines I use, optical bio, biometry machines I use. I mean, I see similar, I mean, I would say, I use this way, okay. I would see, I, I saw, uh, excellent changing, short turning uh, in people using off OK, uh, defocus glasses, spectacle lenses, and also soft contact lenses. Okay, um, we all with, we all know this mostly is like the the excellent short turning is due to their corridor thickening changing, and also for myself when I look at the um, uh, the axial measurement, I I personally will try to measure all the excellent at pretty much the same time of the day. So sometime uh, the excellent might have a little bit variation in different time frame. Sometime, uh, let's say the defocus effect, if they're losing a bit of defocus effect, for example, when ortho K lenses, if they're high mile or if they come in the late at an afternoon, like towards the end of the day, and the defocus effect would lower or lesser, they might have some changes to the uh, to the uh, to the excellent changes and some of my friends uh they do some research in the last few years they notice some uh, uh corridor thickness changes in a different time of the day so they haven't published a paper and that's why we believe uh this is corridor changes instead of the corner of uh corner flattening because when we are using some defocused lenses uh like the um uh, the Hoya one, the Miosmart, and also the, the SLO in my practice, the sellers. And I definitely see some axial uh, uh, the elongations. No, I mean, the axial shortening. And and there's no corneal uh, effect at all because it's a spectacle lenses. You're not touching the cornea. So same for the soft contact lenses. Uh, some soft contact lenses basically have no effect of cornea. And um, we still see the uh, axial length changes. I mean, I, I would say it's nothing to do with the uh, the, the cornea, the front part. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. I think this was a very good answer on this question because lots of people were interested in. Um, another question is any tips on getting quality data or high quality data on young patients who can't sit so long? Is there some recommendations from your side? Oh, very difficult. Uh, for under four years of age, really difficult, really difficult. Um, um, for young, young, young kids, sometimes we try to help them to play some games before. Like, uh, I, I mean, my practice always have chop a chop in my practice. I always have about five, six hundred chop a chop and then chocolate and some toys in my practice give away to those uh, kids who come for the eye examination for myopia. So sometimes the chop a chop, I just get some kids, you look at the chop a chop first, focus the chop a chop for about five seconds, and then like like some tracking exercise, okay? Other kid like chop a chop, chop, chop. And after that, I just give it to the kids. So they hold it. I say, okay, let's look at the look at the balloon. That's a balloon. Okay. You can hang you can then focus the balloon for five seconds, you got one chop a chop, and then a chocolate and some toys. I mean, some of the young kids just have to be more innovative and plus you have to be more patient with those young kids because sometimes they can be really, really just just drive you nuts. Okay, the kids are just 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 like a firework. Okay, just go everywhere. Okay, uh, just be more innovative about how you can entertain the kids. And one important thing is how you engage with the young kids is very important. Make them feel really relaxed, engaged with you. Is uh, you can get some little toys, uh, some chopper chop. Only costs really minimal. The kids is happy, and next time they come back, they always say, "Can I have another one?" Okay, fine, no problem. <laughs> 
So the kids can have chop a chop uh, you know, examination, okay? Uh, we're checking the eye, we don't need to check the teeth, okay? So don't worry, chop chop. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is a very cool uh, idea for me now, uh, because when we develop the Myopia Master, we just have to build a, a box or something like for ch chocolate, which can, can be given to the patients directly. Um, yeah, the box. <laughs> Here it is, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Here we go. Um, uh, Oliver, I have another question. So um, what do you charge um, the patient to use Myopia Master or to, to do Myopia Management in general? Oh, very sensitive question, isn't it? Ooh. Uh, now, I, because each country uh, will have different way in their healthcare system, Okay, that like I was uh, that's why I reckon people think of it differently. Is uh, each country have different uh, healthcare system? Your pricing is different. Your salary is different. Um, I would suggest to you uh, is look at how long it takes you to do one. I mean, one one. I mean, like a, what we some people like a scan. How much? How long it takes you to do the scan? Two eyes. Okay, and how much this machine costs you in your practice? Think about some of the. Uh, 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 the time and also the equipment, how much you need to repay for every month or, or every week. Then you think about what is the fair dollar you should charge when you implement the biometry into your practice. Or maybe you can consider a different way. Uh, you can say, hey, this is my peer management uh, assessment and um, assessment plan. You just, just charge a fixed fee, fixed fee, you do everything, okay? From, from the front of the cornea, to the back of the eye. So what means the front of the coin is the back of the eye. Uh, you check the coin integrity, check for topography, to look at the back of the eye, do the eye size, eye size, and do the uh, fundus photo. If you're OCT, just do everything for the young, young kids because we want to provide the best things uh, to manage the kid from the front to the back. When they were young, to the old. So that's how one thing, if you think how you want to build your practice, is where you start from when they're young. So if you treat them nice and, and, and with love and tender and care, they will stay with you for a long, long time. And then there's something to think about how you can use, utilize technology to build your practice. This is something is a really a key message I'd love to have think about, uh, let love to share with everyone is how we also can differentiate ourselves as an independent practice. Uh, to all the chain group or some corporate and how you uh, proud of yourself. I'm an eye care practitioner. I'm proud of what I'm doing. I'm a specialized in myopia management and definitely need a lot of investment in your time and learn a lot of things. Like you spend time tonight to, to hear uh, my dancing steps, okay? <laughs> and also invest in the machines. And uh, that's just something that I love everyone can, can think about how we can bring optometry uh, to 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 shine and to recognize in our in our society in our professions. Okay, cool. I have two questions I want to ask you. Still, there are multiple questions popping in here. So the first one is a bunch of three questions all together. So first of all, um, how long does it take to capture IHL measurement? Maybe you can say that in a few sentences or in a few words. Um, how does it compare with other biometers? And the Maokia Mask is a device, unique device, which combines auto fraction and actual length. Do you also use the auto fraction data or just the actual length? Um, it's probably taught me, probably I would say all the kids I come to do, I do uh, auto refractor. I mean, the ARXK and actual length, because when the first time they come, this is definitely because the machines using BHVI software and all the, all the information, they need this free data to calculate what's the projection chart, okay? They need three data, Rx, K, and also the actual link. That's just something I always do on every single kit, okay? It doesn't matter what type of treatment plan we are. And you saw some ortho K lenses as well. Sometimes if the lens descended off a bit when they didn't sleep well up the night before, it might give a bit funny reading, okay? That's just something. Uh, probably take me a roughly, I would say, maybe if a good, good Co I mean, cooperate patients probably, I think, is one to one and a half minutes. I think is max, isn't it? I think I can't remember because do really regularly and it basically is really fast. And um, what, what else they would say? Um, ah, compared to other machines, yeah. um, machines have their own, I mean, each company uh, machines have their own features. 
And some machines only give you basically just the Excel link numbers only. Some other get a different feature. Some have their own software as well. I mean, it had to depends on what which machine fit into the into your practice, how to help you to build your practice, and what you need. Maybe that you have already some other machine. You don't need that. Okay, you understand your practice the best. And why did I pick this one? Because I I, I I'm an Australian. Uh, it's powered by BHVI. I support. BHVI because I love Brian Holden so much. So he inspired me uh, to be a person to 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 do a lot of my up here to take up the mouth here kids. Uh, this is one thing I, I love the machines with a lot of information, good data inside, uh, with a lot of scientific based things. So we can help me easy to communicate with the patients and connect with them as well. I think that is something that you know your practice, no one know better no no one know better than you about your practice. You know which machine the best fit to, to your practice. At this, I mean, I find this uh, mouth mask really fit into what uh, my practice right now. And probably I, will, I won't say, uh, I would say it's probably just keep going. I'm expecting the machine might have some new update and keep more data. I can get more feel excited about this mild peer management things and all giving more treatment plan as well. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. There are questions popping up and popping up. Uh, I We cannot stop, so let's do Two more questions and then i hope if there are more questions we can you can still ask them we will answer you can directly send oliver a message or send us a message you will get your answer even if we don't answer it right now so oliver two questions when do you start measuring pre myops is the first question um basically i mean i've been i mentioned uh i think how many years ago i think probably maybe five i mean seven eight years ago i placed basically all the kids come in i just measured them uh excelling so i mean sometimes you could actually just give me numbers only but now with the malpin master in my practice basically every single kids come in in new patients uh i just do it okay i just do it and um if some patients haven't seen for the last 12 months before i have the mission i still doing the uh the the, the biometry as well so this is something give me a lot of baseline because it's a, a first time patient. Some see you, young kids under six. Uh, definitely, this is a definite things that we want to get a, a lot of information as much as possible because a lot of the study, a lot of papers showed us a uh, little resource paper. I've been lately I've been reading some resource papers. Some friend passed it to me, and in Europe, in Hong Kong, in Asia, in in, in Italy, most of the kids when they reach about eight years of age around 57%, eight years of age, 57% are already mild. So six years of age, they roughly about 8%, and seven years of age, about 25. You can see the six, seven, eight, the change is so dramatic. So that's what the pre-mild, we, we want to do things, we want early intervention. I mean, with the technology, we can do much more things, uh, you can do more things in a much more early stage. That's what early in intervention is a responsibility now. It's not just mild peer management only. It, early intervention is something I always remind people we have to do is early interventions. So we are, we're here to control it. And also we're here to prevent it become worse. So prevention is always better than controlling. Okay, brilliant. Last question, I will give you a short answer. Um, so does practice data feedback to BHVI? No, it doesn't do it directly. This is a, the reason is the, um, some regulatory issues. The other questions we will answer, we will answer to you by email. Um, we will just uh, sit together, Oliver and I, and then we just answer it to you. From my side, thank you very much for the participation. It was a brilliant session. Thank you, Dr. Wu. It was really amazing. You did a fantastic job. And the balloon, yeah, this is another balloon, I guess, because the first one already failed because it grew too much. What a habit, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. We don't destroy this balloon. Our target is to make it smaller or to keep it the same size. Yeah, ex exactly. That's exactly the way we want to go. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. It was a brilliant session. Millimeter, like, damn it. 23 millimeter. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what, what is our target. Yeah, thank thank you, um, Dr. Wu, and thanks to everybody who, who, who joined the session. It was super refreshing, I believe, and see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.